surround yourself with success on today's episode of Serve No Master. Today's episode is brought to you by SEM Rush, the premier company for SEO around the world. If you want your website to get found, if you want customers to find you, SEM Rush. To see how SEM Rush can grow your business, go to servenomaster.com backslash SEM Rush right now. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host... You're the average of the people you spend the most time with. We have this natural tendency as humans to even out with the people around us. When there's great differences amongst members of a group or members of a friendship, we'll do things to achieve parity. This is in every area as far as interests, hobbies, passions, and most importantly, finances. So the people you spend the most time with, your closest friends, if they have that nine to five mindset, if they're really time equals money, that's the ratio they're working on, if they're kind of caught up in that mindset, it will be very hard for you to break free because their mindset becomes like the force of gravity. When I started building my own business, every time I talked to some of my friends, hey, I want to work on this project. No, don't do that. Come to the bar with us. Don't stay at home working on the computer. That's lame. Come hang out with us. And they're not trying to hurt me. It's not because they want to stop me from succeeding. They don't see it that way. They simply see the world as, hey, let's have fun now. They're short-term thinkers. You need to start thinking about who you're spending time with. I'm not going to ask you to end a bunch of friendships or cut people off from your life. That's not what you want to do. The best result is really if your friends get as excited about this project as you are and want to go along the same path. But it's more about finding people going on the same journey, whether you find people online, find people in Skype groups, meet people at conferences, go to local meetup groups. Whatever you do, the more you can surround yourself with people on the same path as you, the easier it will be for you to stay the course. I was part of a mastermind. Four or five years ago, uh, when I first moved to Florida, it was a great group of guys. They were all doing such different things online. Most of our conversations were almost a total waste because we couldn't share any techniques. One guy was working in teaching pilots how to pass pilot tests, and another guy was doing a lot in self-development, writing music to overcome trauma. You know, these are things that I don't understand. I don't understand that mark at all. I think he's a great guy and it's so cool that music can help people, but I don't know how to do that. That's nothing like any market I've ever operated in. So there's all these different guys in totally different markets doing 10 different things. Some guys were writing courses that you would give to an outsourcer to teach an outsourcer how to work for you, teaching processes and different types of technologies. Even though all of these guys were doing very different things, they were all of the mindset of working online and there was great encouragement there. And I was a part of that group and I noticed that everyone in the group was making about $45,000 a year in profit after all their business expenses. Now, one of the guys was grossing around 100 and then his profit was about half of that because he had a lot of expenses for his type of business. And another guy was making 60 and only 15 of it was expenses. We all had different grosses, but somehow in this group, everyone was at 45. Now, when I joined the group, I was making around $25,000, $30,000 a year. But once I hit 45, I looked around me and go, oh my gosh, if I keep hanging out with these guys, I'm not going to grow. I need to join a group that's ahead of me to pull me up. And that's how we want to move forward. We always want to be surrounded by people that are just a little bit ahead of us. So their influence and their encouragement and their their numbers make us go, oh, I want to do better. If you're in a group and you're hanging out with 10 other people that are doing the same type of business as you and you're making the most money of everyone there, you're making $1,000 a month, they're all making 800. Well, you get to feel really good about being the best. So you won't feel any burn, any desire to push yourself and grow to the next level. You actually limit yourself when you are the top dog in a group. And this is why everyone in that group should constantly jump in between groups too. People should always be changing who they hang out with around people that are doing better than them. When we're around people that are ahead of us, they can offer us mentorship, guidance, wisdom, partnerships, and also most importantly of all, motivation. We want to hit the numbers that people around us are hitting. We want to hit those moments. If you're in a group and you're trying to become an outlier, then the group will do everything to keep you where you're at, both actively and passively. And as you're moving forward, if you surround yourself with people on the same journey, once you're in a group and you hit those numbers, you want to move to the next group. So I constantly jump masterminds and constantly change who I hang out with because I want to be around people that are doing better than me because that helps me to grow. 
I still love and have great friendships with people that are on the same journey as me, that are behind me. I spend most of my time every day writing blog posts, recording podcasts, replying to emails, doing stuff on social media, making courses for people that are behind me further down the mountain. You're behind me on this journey. That's how I give value to the people behind me. But at the same time, for me to get better, for me to grow my business and learn new things, I always want to be around people that are doing something different than me, doing something better than me, because that gives me wisdom, motivation, and excitement. I want you to think about who you invest your time with and the return you're getting on that investment. If you surround yourself with people that are a lot of fun, but have no aspirations, then slowly your aspirations will fade away. I can tell you right now that if you read my book, you jump on one of my challenges, whether it's my list building challenge or my blog building challenge, if you go through one of my courses, if you surround yourself with people that are naysayers, that think the internet's whack or the internet's full of scammers, the internet's not real or that you can't make money just by writing for someone else, you know, the people that don't believe well, then you'll never succeed. They'll hold you back because they'll keep saying it doesn't work and that'll cause you to quit sooner. Most people quit when they're 90% of the way to the goal. The number of people who go through my entire nonfiction writing course and then never post an ad or never respond to an ad for someone looking to hire a worker, it blows my mind. They go through all the effort of learning my process, learning the entire system, and then all they have to do is let people pay them and they won't do that last part. That's where people get stuck. People don't get stuck at the beginning. Very few people get frozen in the middle. It's a nine video course. It's two hours of content. Very few people quit in the first five minutes. They watch and invest the entire two hours. It's only the final implementation steps where people get stuck. And that's where the people around you are going to make a difference. If the people around you are saying, ah, don't post an ad. That's lame. Why would you post an ad on Craigslist? Why would you do this? Why would you join that website? Don't spend your time doing that. It's not going to work anyways. They'll convince you that it doesn't work and then you won't implement. They'll stop you at that last moment. Whereas if you're surrounded by people that are doing stuff all the way, hey, that sounds cool. You should just try it. Sometimes people around me, some of my friends try ideas that I think are terrible. I think they're going into a market that's weird. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not sure why they're doing it. But I always say, go for it. If I don't have experience in it, I don't know for sure that their idea won't work. The advice I give is encouragement. Because I have the serve no master mindset, my mindset is encourage people to try things that I don't know. Now, if someone's trying a business model that I've dealt with in the past and I know a little something about and I can speak from experience, then I'll give them a different set of advice. But when someone has an idea and it's something completely new, it's something I don't know about, my tendency is to say, try it and find out. Whereas most people with a nine to five mindset, their tendency is to say, don't even bother, it probably won't work, don't waste your time. That mindset, that give up as soon as you can mindset is keeping so many people from achieving greatness. And it's so unfortunate. I want you to put in the time now to find people around you that are on the same path as you. I'm working on trying to rebuild my form. I have the software set up a little bit. Hopefully, by the time you're listening, it'll be set up, but I'm not sure if I can get it to work. Every time I set up a form, it gets hacked and it's all these problems, but I want to create places where you can find other people of the, of the same mind as you. That's why I have the Facebook page and that's why each of my products has a Facebook group so that you can find other people to talk to that are on the same path as you and talk about things and say, here's what I'm struggling with, here's what I'm trying to work on, here's what I'm doing, so you can get encouragement and feedback so you can get a little bit of community. But it's also really valuable to, as much as you can find some digital community, it's really, really valuable to get community in your local area. And the way you can get that is by going to meetup.com and going to the local like entrepreneurs meetups, the small business owners meetups, the writers meetups, the meetup for flax. If you're interested in copy and you're interested in that type of stuff, that's what PR people call each other. There's these different groups. You can find groups in your area, in your markers, people trying to make it online, bloggers, all these different things. And being around these people is going to be very valuable. You want to be around people that are actually doing it. As much as it's cool to be around people that are just trying, you do want to be around people that are serious about it. I see a lot of people that are always in Starbucks working on a novel that they've never finished. They've been working on it for five years. You don't want to be caught up with people that are not finishers. That's the one danger. That's the one thing, a little caveat. So if you go to Starbucks, you just hang out with all the other laptop people. You want to make sure they're actually doing something that's crossing the finish line. One of my friends, Jesse, is a writer. He writes about merging American and Chinese businesses. All of his stuff, it's something outside of my knowledge, but he writes these amazing books. He's been very successful doing some traditional publishing stuff in the past, doing physical books in the past. He's the only friend of mine that's a writer. And it's funny, we were both friends before we became writers. We're still friends 10 years later. 
most of the other people around me, other than him, I'm not friends with any writers. I meet a lot of people. I know a lot of people in my circle and people that I encounter in my daily life that tell me that they're writers, but they've never finished a book. And that's not the same thing. That's like saying I'm an actor, but I've never acted anything. I've written a movie, but I've never, no one's ever read it. If you've written a novel and the only place it exists is in your drawer, you haven't done anything. It's only when you finish something and release it into the world that it becomes real. The reason I can say I'm a best-selling author is because I've written books that have been put on bestseller lists. It's the connection to reality. That's why, unfortunately, I have to say best-selling author instead of just saying author now to get like real credibility. Because people all the time, they mean, we go, oh, I'm a writer too. What have you written? Well, nothing, but you just said you're a writer. What does that mean? You know how to write? And that's the challenge. And some people struggle with the difference between author and writer. I don't know. I don't write fiction. So that's why I say writer. But sometimes I say author because I do write books and I have a lot of personal stories in there. So there's an element of that. You want to be around people that are finishers, that are succeeding. It's great to be around people that are total beginners. You can find other little serve no master beginners to hang out with and talk about this journey. But you also want to be around people that are really implementing and they're actually starting to make money. You want to find someone who started doing nonfiction six months ago and just sold their first little ghostwriting book or this and that. So that way you get to see a little bit of the success ahead of you as well. You want people that are at your same level and people that are a little in front of you. One of the things I've discovered over time is that people come and go. People at your level will fade away. By surrounding yourself with people that are a little bit ahead of you, you get the advantage of their wisdom, you get to learn from their experience, you get to avoid the pitfalls they fell into. And because they're just a little bit ahead of you, they remember what you're going through. Sometimes if I'm talking to someone who's brand new, they're talking about their first blog post, they're talking about their first little, I forget the little struggles. You know, I forget the struggles of trying to get your first article client sometimes. I don't connect with that emotionally because it was so long ago for me. Some of the ways that I got my first client, some of the ways I communicate with people, things have changed. And so when you talk to me, you won't get the level of empathy that you're looking for simply because it's been too long for me. And that's reality. That's me being totally honest with you. Whereas if you wanted to talk to me about getting a video client or doing copywriting projects, because that's something a little bit newer for me, then that's something I have a little more empathy with because my memory is stronger. I remember those struggles a little bit more. As you're working your way up, it helps to have people ahead of you. It helps to have people at the same level. And it helps to have a mentor in front of you, whether that's me or whether you find a different online guru or someone else you want to follow. There's lots of great guys out there. I don't want to pretend I'm the only one or I'm the best. I'm just someone who has my philosophy and I teach in my way. There's other people that teach in different ways that are wonderful. And if you connect with them, then I totally encourage that. I don't want you to feel like you should follow me even if my stuff isn't working for you. But you really only need one guru that you're following or one person at the top of the mountain. If you try to learn how to write from seven different people, you'll get contradictory advice. Some of my writing philosophies go against other people's writing philosophies. That's just reality. People have different approaches. I research in a way different than other people. My writing process is 90% research, 10% writing. Other people... Their process might be 20% research, 80% writing. They might do it completely differently. They might have a totally different approach. And if you try to merge and learn those two systems at the same time, you'll hit problems. I'm all about organic traffic. If you try to learn how to find customers from me at the same time as you're trying to learn from someone else who teaches all about Facebook traffic, you'll run into conflicts because it's two different philosophies. The way I write content, the way I write blog posts, the way I approach social media is different than my friends who do paid Facebook advertising. Neither method is right or wrong, they're just different. So you want to only really put one person ahead of you or one system that you're following. That's why I say only follow one course at a time. You surround yourself with people that are on the same journey as me so that you can get affirmation, so you can get encouragement, so that you can feel like they get you. That's where the real value lies. And when you're surrounded by people that are doing a little bit better than you, they'll pull you up. They'll help you find projects, opportunities, and things that will bring you up to their level financially. When you're in a group that's making $1,000 a month, and once you hit $1,000 a month, then you join the $5,000 a month group. And when you hit five, then you join the $20,000 a month group, then $100,000 a month group, then the million dollar a month group. Continue to surround yourself with people that are seeking excellence. Now, within these groups, you really want to find people with a serve no master mindset. And there's a lot of other names for that. People call it the wealthy mindset. People call it the one percenter mindset. There's different names for it. But the main tenets of the mindset are really that you believe you deserve greatness and that you believe you should make money without having to invest time. You believe there's a disconnect between the time you spend on a project and the amount of money you make. Traditional mindset is for every hour I work, I make this much money. My mindset is I want to make as much money as possible. The amount of hours that went into a project are irrelevant. It's only the result. I'm very results oriented. My mindset is the wealthy mindset, the one percenter mindset, the successful mindset. I believe that amazing things are possible for you and possible for me. I believe that you can make great money and I believe that you can make projects that create passive income, that create automated revenues, that give you royalties and recurring revenue for years and years. 
when you're looking for people to surround yourself with, you want to make sure that when you join the groups, people have the same mindset. Some people start an online business or start their own business and they're just creating a new job for themselves. They're just saying, hey, I'm just going to work eight hours a day for myself to make $100 a day. They're still caught up in that time to money ratio. That's the one kind of thing you want to avoid. Just because someone's trying to start their own business doesn't mean they're on the same path as you. Your path is really defined by believing that you can achieve amazing wealth and by believing freedom is very valuable and by believing that time has no relation to profit. Those three little things will really help you find the kind of people that you want to surround yourself with, find the path to success, the opportunity for amazingness. And what you'll discover when you start to join groups that are of the same mindset as you, that more and more opportunities will come your way. Things that people perceive as luck will actually be great opportunity. When you join a group, okay, you're the guy making $1,000 a month, everyone else making $5,000 a month, or you're the gal making $1,000 a month, everyone else making five times more money than you. They will all throw you business opportunities that they would reject. My friend offered me a job full-time for $20 an hour last week. He offered me $800 a week to work for him full-time. So that's way below what I make. I go to one of my associates, someone who's near me, further down the mountain, and I said, do you want this job? It's way more money than you're making right now, and it's a great opportunity, and it's a step on the path to greater success. Because it's not a permanent job, it's a developed skills job, form some relationships, form some connections, and then move on to the next thing in three or six months. That's really the mindset. So this is exactly what I did. Someone offered me a job that's less money than I would take, I give it to someone. If someone who's making $5,000 a month gets offered something, they'll pay $3,000 a month, they'll turn it down. But they can offer it to you. They just tripled your income. So something they reject is something that you'd accept. This is how you create opportunity. All of your friends will say, oh, you're so lucky. Someone just handed you a $3,000 a month job. That's not what happened, is it? You put in hard work. You created the correct mindset. You demonstrated that you're someone who implements, someone who executes, someone who takes action and crosses the finish line on projects. And then you surrounded yourself with people that are of the same mindset of you, but ahead of you. If all the people you're around are making the same amount of money as you or less, none of them will ever throw you an opportunity or they'll throw you opportunities that won't really help you. They'll be at the level you're making right now. If you are making $1,000 a month and your friend gets offered a project that's paying $200, then they'll offer it to you. Like, oh, do you want this $200 project? I don't have time for it. It's not great. It's at the level you're already at. If you're in a group where they're making five or $10,000 a month, the same type of project people offer you will be worth way more money. That's the value of your social circle. They'll bring you out. They'll provide guidance, mentorship, comfortableness. I'm a big, big believer in networking. It's really important to me. I have a whole philosophy, deep structure for how I approach networking and social circles and who I surround myself with. But this is the core philosophy. Understanding that surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded means that more opportunity will come your way. But it also means... That when it's your turn, you can pay it forward because when you're making $3,000 a month, the $1,000 a month project you were working on, you will then offer to someone else who's making $500 a month. You get to pay it forward. It continues to help the people around you. This is not about take. This is about give and take. This is about people give you things and you are able to give other people things. You get to pay it forward. Like I just was able to offer that job to someone who was helping me out once I'm offering them an opportunity. And that's not bad money. It's $3,200 a month. He's going to jump from online projects making $500 a month, it's six times more money he's making right now. It's a great opportunity. And that's what's amazing about having these connections. I pass on jobs all the time. This is why when people are part of my nonfiction writing group on my little Facebook group, I post jobs in there all the time that I don't have time to do or that the pay is lower than I would normally take. So you get these amazing opportunities. And then when you're surrounded by people that are making $100,000 a month or a million dollars a month, sometimes they'll ask you to do something and they'll offer you amount of money that's insane. They'll say, hey, will you work on something for me for three weeks? I'll give you, I don't know, 25 grand. Because you project confidence, because you seem savvy, because you're of the same mindset to them, they'll assume your rates are similar to theirs and they'll pay you an amount of money that's amazing. This is why I've shared these podcasts in a specific order to help you get the right mindsets first so that as you implement these things, you can find amazing opportunities for amazing revenue. By understanding the value of the people around you, you can unlock the next financial level over and over and over again. This is how you can become a millionaire in just a few short years. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Serve No Master podcast.
Join me on my Facebook page at facebook.com backslash serve no master.